Hello and welcome. I'm Triple Helix and this is Tomb Raider. Now, this video, if you're watching it right now, it's probably about Saturday or maybe Friday. And yes, I know I don't normally upload videos then, but the internet has been out for a while and it should be going up by Friday slash Saturday. And there will be videos throughout the weekend to make up for the videos that I have currently, you know, missed this week. So, don't worry about that if you actually want to follow my channel. If you don't, then, and if you're just looking at this for Tomb Raider, then you'll be happy to know that that's what I'm here to give. Now, I've also gotten, I'm also going to change up this first impressions thing a little bit, because from the feedback that I've gotten, it's not as enjoyable to watch me play through the opening parts of the game, because there's a lot of cutscenes generally, and I can't really talk during those. So, I've decided to play, I've played about an hour of this game, and there are some things that it's done right and wrong, and hold on a second, I'm just going to turn on subtitles here so you can listen, or read the cutscenes if you can't quite hear them. But this game's done, I, I have to admit, I'm actually sort of enjoying this game. And that's weird, because I was going into this thinking that it was going to be really not good. And I got myself into a sort of bias that everybody else seems to have gotten into, like about Devil May Cry. I'm like, this isn't Laura, Laura's not like this survival-y sort of person. She's all about, you know, just jumping off of giant buildings and raiding tombs and all that stuff. And I'm actually happy to admit that I'm completely fine with the game being the way it is. It's rather enjoyable as the type of game that it's trying to be. Now, that's not to say that it's without its problems. It definitely, it, it's very story oriented. So if you're coming into this wanting like a lot of action and stuff... I, again, I haven't played too far into the game, so I don't really know, but from the outset, it seems to be sort of, it has an Uncharted, it has an Uncharted vibe, so if you've played Uncharted, you've sort of, you'll kind of get where this is coming from. It's got elements of Uncharted, like the climbing and all of that, and yes, I know a lot of games have climbing and third-person shooting, but this feels a lot more Uncharted than the rest of them. And a cool little mechanic that they introduce in this game drifting a little bit off topic here, is these campsites, which are basically like apparently fast travel things, and it's an open world thing, which I'm quite, sort of confused about because what I've played so far has been fairly linear and sort of just point A to point B and then watch scripted cut, scripted event slash cutscene at that location. But apparently there's fast travel. I, I have not raided any tombs, and again, I'm about an hour in, although it has been more about just surviving and finding friends, and I only did my first, and I only committed my first kill about 10-15 minutes ago, game time. Although, one problem that's going to be immediately apparent is that, remember how I said 10-15 minutes ago, Laura had killed somebody and was retching and, you know, crying, complaining? Watch this. Not a complaint. Ah, shot off a flare. The enemies are very smart, and I like that about them, but as you can see, she doesn't seem to, you know, honestly care that she's just, you know, killed people here. They just seem to be dying, and she seems totally fine with that. Ah, shot with a flaming arrow. Don't you just hate that? Ooh, I should get down here. Now, the cover system I really like, and the combat's generally pretty enjoyable. But, again, one of my complaints was... She jumps from, you know, I don't want to kill anybody to, I'm going to kill everybody very quickly. Do I, I think I have a pistol. Yeah. And I feel like Far Cry 3 sort of did the same thing, although that wasn't as much a focus on that. Although one thing that I sort of like is that they actually bothered to, you know, when Laura was climbing up a mountain, she was, you know, she was talking to one of her friends and sudden, and she had said... You know, I had to kill somebody, and he's like, that must not have been easy. Well, it's actually scary how easy it was. And I found that sort of interesting, a sort of... Can I not light this? No, I have to light my torch first. Where's a fire? Up there, it looks like, but I don't think I can get back up there. Can I? I cannot. So... That's good, I'm sort of stuck here, but okay. Can I use my bow for anything? Oh, I can use Hunter's Instinct. Hunter's Instinct is sort of helpful. It points things out. Ah, there we go. It points things out for you to do. And I'm not really good at solving puzzles or being observant in any way, so 
apologies for that. Although this hasn't seemed to be, it hasn't been too many puzzles yet. There have been some pretty decent puzzles here, which is interesting enough. I didn't expect them to be that good, considering that this is a modern game and modern games never have good puzzles anymore. And they're introducing a new mechanic here, the stealth kill, where you can just walk up behind somebody. Oop, mash E. Where you can just watch up, walk up behind somebody and silently kill them. Um, another complaint I have about this game is that sometimes I'll find myself doing the wrong thing in a scripted event because it doesn't explicitly say what to do. I mean, I think that the little symbols that appear when you're supposed to be doing the quick time thingy indicate what button you're supposed to be pushing or what you're supposed to be doing. But sometimes it, it I can't see them because it moves too fast and I end up... Oh, whoops. These guys are totally seeing me. Ah. And I'm going to switch my pistol because I don't, I don't have to actually draw it every time. Oh, that's a Molotov. Ah, I've burned to death. Yeah, as I said, the, the enemies are fairly smart and competent. Which is something I really like. And the combat is fun and fluid enough. Although, it's... Again, it does feel a bit weird that Laura has gone from I'm never going to kill anybody to I'm going to kill everybody. Although, it's not like games haven't done that before. All the, the first... It, I, I like... But generally speaking, I do like Laura as a character. And she's been fun to watch. And get to know as time goes on. Although I've only seen her for about an hour. But she seems interesting and... You know, developed enough so far. Alright, this is a nice easy headshot. He's looking the other way, so he's not going to see as I shoot him in the back of the... That was a blatant miss. And then he thankfully walks right into the spot I fired. Same with him. You know, I found it interesting... Oh, they found me. I find it really interesting how... Where's the guy who saw me? Oh, over there. Uh, I don't know. Is there any way to not fire my bow? Well, that's probably a good way to do it. Yeah, somebody's trying to... Oh, there he is. Let's just notch the bow back. Another quick shot. We'll do it. Perfect. Bows have sort of, interestingly enough, become this... This thing in games lately where the bow is an amazing tool and really fun to... Oh, we're gonna have a burning building sequence. That hasn't been done to death already for sure. Yes, it has. But, for whatever reason, bows seem to have become really popular in gaming, you know. They're deadly, they're silent, and their ammo can be retrieved, so ammo's never really a problem. Alright, it looks like we're going to have a... Oh no, she's going to be hold W. There are a lot of quick time events so far in this game. I'm hoping that it gets better, because it feels like a lot of the game is playing itself. Which... Generally speaking, when I play games, like, you know, when I play a game, I don't really want to be watching the game play itself as I just hold a button down and it pretends to think I'm interacting with it. Especially the way the games, like, these games are nowadays. I think that the older style of games had done them right with the idea of, you know, you control everything, everything is really open, everything is up to you. This one is a lot more linear, and it's becoming a lot more quick-time eventy. and if the game continues to be like that, I'm going to be upset with that. And this is somebody who we've been looking for for a little while. Also, this is a very much more mature Tomb Raider than the rest of them. It's uh, It's got a lot of mature elements in it. Including Laura's first kill being the one of a man who wanted to rape her. To say the least. Also, since I haven't really filled you in, I'm sure you can figure this out, because you've probably seen videos of this before. But, in case you haven't, the story of this game... I really don't want to interrupt them, I'm just going to let them finish this.
And as I was saying before these guys had to have a conversation, the game is mainly about... Or, Laura is an archaeologist. They're on the search for this... Um... For this ancestor. Or the tomb of an ancestor. I can't really be sure what. Because I have forgotten at the moment. But... Basically, they're on the ship, they're heading into this area that has a lot of bad storms in it, and they get shipwrecked along the way, and Laura ends up on this island, separated from the rest of her group. She finds the group, the group gets kidnapped because the guy, and then Laura and this other guy who she was with get kidnapped because he's an idiot and doesn't use a gun, even though he was told to have it. So, that's where we are now, basically. Also, a real annoyance with these, with these subtitles is that they're... In, these, in this block font, they don't have, like, a transparent background to them. As, you know, as do most, as do most subtitles in, now, in gaming nowadays, but it's not that bad. Although I feel like it could be intrusive when you're in combat with guys who are shouting things left and right. What is this here? Okay, so basically it says I need fire. I think I should just go back then and light the... Yeah, I think I should just go back and light these things here. You can light your torch with these, and that just lets you light other objects on fire or light up stuff, both of which are important. And graphically, this game is really appealing. It is a very good-looking game, and for the main... I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what that did there. Oh, it opened this up. And for the most part, it's it runs pretty smoothly, although there is a, and I it, you can't I can't really justify that right now because I'm running this on normal just to loosen the load on my processor because while running flat fraps it's sort of hard for my computer to handle all of that at once. I think I can climb up there. No, apparently you can't. Ah, yes, I can. You can do this little wall scamper. The the platforming is fairly forgiving, as in. Generally, if you jump in the sort of, if you jump in the direction of something, it'll, it'll put you, it'll put you where you need to be, which is definitely a, a good thing. Because when playing with the PC controls, which I am, it can be sort of hard to get a jump precise. I'm not really sure what I'm doing up here. Ah, uh, yeah, no, it's not this way. Ah, there we go. Okay, so apparently Laura will just swing from that. As I said, the, the platforming's fairly forgiving. And the hunter vision allows you to see things that Laura can interact with or needs to use to solve puzzles. That door is completely blocked, so we will head in here. Some more arrows. That's another thing that really annoys me about this game, is that early in, Laura's all about, oh, survival, survival, and then she's finding... For whatever reason, there's just random quivers of arrows lying around the jungle for no apparent reason. And literally every five feet, there's an arrow, um, a quiver full of arrows. Now, I know it's it's a little bit nitpicky to be like, well, there's just ammo everywhere, even though in old games that was the case. But this isn't an old game. This is a modern game, and modern games, you know, doing their modern things. They have their own modern problems. They shouldn't have the problems of the older ones. I don't believe that you're likely to find an arrow quiver in the middle of... A jungle, or as many as Laura has found, anyway. Because I have found quite a few. And I've completely missed that. For whatever reason, the zip lines are a bit iffy about whether or not you'll actually catch on to them. Which is sort of annoying, especially since zip lines often lead, you know, are often between life and death. Not really in that sense, like that one wasn't. But more often than not, when you get on a zip line, you're going to be zip lining over a giant chasm. Ah, oh, that's some bad lightning. But as I was saying, it, it's usually over a giant chasm, and you know, if you miss that, you fall to your death. Thankfully, the load times aren't too, too bad. Okay. Also, there may be Germans on this island who've been part of, who were in World War II. There may have been World War II fighters in this, on this island. Which is interesting. I found a lot of, uh... Alright, it's telling me to go that way. I'll just... I guess I'll just follow it. But there have been some weird, like, natives here who have been trying to kill me. And 
Okay. And as I've said, I still have not raided any tombs. Which, for a game called Tomb Raider, considering what the... the considering what the old Tomb Raiders were about... I'm not sure why it doesn't have that. And... I was definitely expecting okay. something to pop out behind me. To Too much amnesia. The... I should also try to explain like the skill system a little bit. The skill system is pretty interesting. Okay. And yet another quick time event where I just mash W and D. Apparently I've done it incorrectly. I, I feel like I was pushing A and D. I'm not really sure. It, that's what I mean. It doesn't really tell you. It doesn't give you any feedback of if you're doing it correctly or not, which sort of a, annoys me, especially considering that... Yeah, it's telling me to mash left and right here. And it doesn't always... It's not always like that. It will take a long time for the prompt to actually come up. At which point, you may already be dead. Because the time the font takes to go up, if you start mashing at that point, you will pretty much already have died. Which can be fairly annoying. It feels it feels sort of like a cheap death, as in like, you know, I'm doing so well, why do you, why do you kill me game? Because I didn't know what to do. Although, it's a minor complaint, because even though quick time events are pretty common, they they can usually be predicted. When you're trying to pry something open, you mash E. When you're trying to stab something repeatedly, you mash F. If you're just trying to kick something, you push F. Uh, I don't really want to go down there. That looks like certain death. Although, I think I have to, so... Yeah, I think I can hang from that and jump that way. No. Whoops. I've fallen. But I'm okay. Because Laura has ankles of steel. Oh, wait. I was just going to get the pack. That's another thing I really like about Hunter's Vision. If you're ever lost, it sort of leads you in the right direction. And this is the most the game has actually opened up in the time that I've spent with it. Most of the time, it's very closed levels and, you know, rather linear. Although this has been a little bit open. I'm not going to go as far to say that it's, you know, an actually open, open. But there's... It's a bit... It's non-linear. It's more of a little open playgroundish area where you can do a number of things to ultimately get to your main objective. One one interesting feature about this game that I didn't mention yet, and it's just an interesting little quirky feature, that a lot of people have been, you know, uh, just a thing that I want to... That's a nice invisible wall. Just a thing that people seem to be having a problem with is that they'll try and run this game on ultra settings or ultimate settings, whatever the highest settings are. They'll try and run them on that, and they find that they can't. And I've actually figured out the issue to that. There's apparently a feature in the game that lets you actually render every one of Laura's hair. And for not particularly strong processes, that absolutely kills it, because I tested it. I set everything on normal settings, so it runs at 60 frames. And then I turn on the hair thing, when I went into a cutscene, whenever it went to Laura, it dropped to 30. And then any as soon as it left Laura, it went to 80. So, if you're having a problem with that, use that. Roth. And Roth is alive. One thing that I've really... Another thing that I'm not really happy about with the story is that I haven't really gotten to care about any of the other characters. I don't really know any of their motives. Only the archaeologist, I sort of know the motives about, but I don't really like him because he's... He's not a character that I enjoy. He's sort of just like a, a selfish bastard who does everything for himself.
Oh, let's have him a fast ladder then. Just be careful, Laura. Now, for as many cutscenes as you're actually seeing now. Thank you, Roth, for interrupting me. But as, for as many cutscenes as you think you're seeing now, this was actually... Okay, you have to push E. It was actually infinitely worse early on in the game, as in, there were cutscenes every five or so seconds. You would basically hold W to walk forward, and then immediately be introduced to another cutscene. Which can be rather annoying, because I don't really like to watch a game, I like to play it. But in the... I think I'm supposed to climb up here. Can I do anything with that? No. I think jumping is pointless. Yeah. Let's see, what does this say to do? Probably should head up here. But in the whole scheme of things, it's... Oh, I don't know what I have to do. I have to go back to that other... The thing that I had seen up at the top. In the whole scheme of things, I think cutscenes can be good if they're used sparingly, but... A lot of games have not been using them sparingly in recent memory. As in, like, Metal Gear Rising. That game is nuts and I love it, but... It's cutscene usage is pretty heavy. This game's cutscene usage has been pretty heavy so far. I'm not sure if it's quite Metal Gear Rising level, but it is around that. I'm not sure how long of a game this is, although I know that it's got a considerable amount of collectibles and replayability. And... During a short little... Burst of... Oh, okay, so I have to actually push E there. Whoops. Am I just stuck down here now, or can I actually get out? Ah, I can get out. But in a in about a 15-minute burst of internet that I actually had, I played a bit of the game's multiplayer just to get a, an opinion on it. And it's, it's, it's totally pointless. Just completely miss it. If you want to play a decent third-person multiplayer... It's basically third-person multiplayer with a bit of jumping around in it sort of Uncharted-esque, although the one difference between this, is, this and Uncharted is that Uncharted did it well. This game did not in the slightest. It was it was generic, the weapons didn't have any, you know, it, it didn't feel satisfying in the slightest, and I didn't like it at all. So, if you're thinking about buying this game for its multiplayer, and, you know, you don't really like the single player, or what you're watching right now isn't really appealing, then I don't really recommend this game for you. Another thing I kind of want to say right now, because I don't think I've mentioned it yet, is that I'm probably not going to be doing review full reviews for games anymore because... There we go. Full reviews for games anymore because by the time I can actually get around to them, uh, a lot of the reviews have already been posted and everything, and nobody really wants to see, you know, just some random small YouTubers' opinions. And I can totally... I understand that completely. It's nothing against any of, you know, you guys. I just... Personally, I don't really feel the need to do a review on a game, especially because it makes me feel compelled to... I think I've already done this. Especially since it makes me feel compelled to replay, or actually play through it very quickly, as in with Dead Space, where I essentially had to complete it within a few days. Which was a bit annoying, and I don't really like rushing through games, I like taking my time, but in order to get you know, appease the YouTubers, or the appease the YouTube viewers, you actually have to get things out in a timely fashion. Ah, so there's where I'm supposed to go. Not down there. Up these walls right here. Perfect. The platforming and animations in this game are pretty nice. That's one thing that I have, think it has over Uncharted, is that the animations of climbing are fairly w more well done, to say. Uncharted's are definitely nice, but I feel like they can be a bit stiff sometimes and a bit generic. Ah, uh, there's more people here. The cover system is really nice because Laura will just immediately crouch behind cover. And only when there's danger around. So, there's no accidentally sprinting into cover. Which is definitely a nice thing. I hated that in games where basically the sprint button is the cover button. I think I can get him before. Uh, don't throw a Molotov at me. Where's uh, the other guy? There he is. Nice little headshot right there. Perfect, and 
that was a relatively easy fight. The enemies so far have just been wielding bows, they actually. Well, actually, some of them have been wielding guns, although I haven't seen too many of them. And, well, that was a bit weird. And Laura's not really that... She, she doesn't take too many hits to kill. There is regenerative health in this game because, you know, it's a modern game. What ga Modern games don't have regenerative health. I feel like I'm using the term modern game a lot. And, oh, I thought I was stuck there. And I feel like that might spawn some criticism, but, you know, it's true. How do I get out of here? Because I can't jump in the water for some reason. That's really stupid. You mean Laura can climb up cliffs, but she can't pull herself out of two-inch deep water. And I've fallen in again. The PC controls aren't as accurate as I'd like them to be for this type of game, but considering that it's got a considerable amount of aiming and shooting in it, I would much rather aim with a mouse than with a... Oh, come on. Than with a... an Xbox 360 controller. Oh, I'm supposed to come up here, am I? Well... Crap, I guess... Just ignore my stupidity, guys. I'm not really good at problem solving. I can't light that because I don't have a lighter. Although I could... Nah, I'm going to keep the video interesting. I'm not going to do it. Or does it actually want me to... No, it doesn't want me to light it. It just said that. Alright. So, I guess I'll just light this and burn this down for some scavenging. The... I still haven't fully explained the skill system and the scavenge system. Basically, you pick up salvage from crates, like the one there, and... You can use those to upgrade your weapons, such as your bow, your pistols, or other weapons that you may unlock in the game. I'm going to assume that you will because you have four slots. Oh, this is falling. Jump. And this is one of those moments where the game shows off how beautiful it actually is, which is kind of interesting. Getting closer to the radio. Oh, stop interrupting me, guys. All right, perfect. Now I can play the game again. Ooh. All right, stick on my pistol for these guys. But the ooh, get out. But the skill system in this game, you just you get XP for performing certain actions such as killing people and skinning animals, picking up herbs, which is really interesting. I find that it, it, I like that a lot that you can get that you unlock experience for killing. Can I not light the torch on the... Oh, yes, I can. There we go. But I find it really cool that you can get experience from, you know, doing things that in other games would just get you an animal pelt or something that, let's be honest here, you can't use in the slightest. So I find that really cool. But you use the experience to... Use the experience in to unlock skill points. When you unlock a skill point, you can get, you know, you can further your either your skills of survival, your hunting skills, or I believe your gunning skills, which I think you unlock after you pick up your first gun, which I just have. I think this is where you get to see sort of the Laura's backstory on how she actually ended up here. There have been one of these before that was basically detailing how she got here. So I'll let them talk. Cutscenes, man. Please. Thank you. 
Dr. James Whitman, filler 15, take three, and action. Okay, take a note. Take a firm grip, and then slice him down the belly, like this. Yeah, you got... Cut! 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 Is, is he coming back? <sighs> I'll go get him. I'm, I'm meant to be bringing culture to the people, Sam, not dinner. Uh, uh, no, no offense, Jonah. The, the audience demands content, Dr. Whitman. You know that. So until we find the Lost Kingdom, we need footage like this. Come on, let's just take it from the top, okay? We're gonna make you look like Gordon Ramsay in editing. Dr. James Whitman, filler 15, take four, action. Okay, now take a firm grip. And slice him down the belly. Like that. I've studied them so much, I can see charts on the back of my eyelids. But if I'm not right about Yamatai being in the Dragon's Triangle... I remember when you found that one, your father's digs. You ran up and showed it to me dressed in your penguin pajamas. <laughs> I was five years old, it was my first find. You've got great instincts, Carl. You just have to trust them. That's what my father used to say. Now there was a man that ran on instinct. For better or worse. He would have been so proud of you, Lara. We're getting closer to the storm. Well, whatever's coming, we'll get through it, eh? Haha, <laughs> <laughs> little do they know that they're gonna end up shipwrecked. This cutscene has taken a long time. Ah, there we go, it's finally over. Now, clearly, as demonstrated there, um, one of the problems is apparent is that a lot of these people are given these personas that, and I don't really know what their, you know, what their motive is for it. As in, the only person I actually who, I actually feel like I know who he is is the archaeologist who was, he's a reality TV star. He's he's one of those actor types who's just like, no, I just want to be famous. I don't want to be, I'm, I'm too good for all of you. Art is this and art is that. And then there's Laura, who I've been playing the game with. Roth, I'm sort of getting to know the rest of them. I have no idea who they are. I could care less about them. So, that's, that's definitely a pain. Uh, I have unlocked a new thing here. Alright, Brawler, that's another one. I've, you, I, I only had these two at this point. I think that I prefer Hunter just because it'll, it has, it's got the most variety. Although I don't actually think I can... Can I not actually get these? Ah, uh, okay. So it says I need to buy more skills. I cannot master these anymore. So that means that I will have to... Improve this. Uh, this is This is to show off basically the... Sort of... Oh, I can retrieve arrows. That's definitely useful. I will take that for sure. This is sort of just showing off the, the, what is it, the skill system in the game. It's fairly well done. And then there's the, uh, then there's this side of the game, which allows you to upgrade your weapons. And, you know, why not just upgrade the bow? Because it's amazing. I definitely want this, because this will allow me to fire much faster, which is a good thing, because it takes a long time to draw the bow otherwise. So I'm going to continue my quest up to the mountain. And also, I find it kind of funny that there's just random caches of ammo lying out and around. Okay. So, never mind. It's not so weird. There's actually people here. Ah, oh, there we go. I think I can... Oh, I don't really want to sneak up on him. I'm just going to pull the arrow and fire. And he's done. And... Can I get this shot? Here's a good chest to do the arrow physics. Nope, arrow fix is pretty much just, you know, fire the arrow, it goes straight. Although, let's just get behind cover here. I can take that guy out silently. Who else is here? Is there anybody in that, or is that just... I think I can... Can I take that out? 
I don't know. I'm going to try. Ah, uh, it needs to go down again. Come on, lean down. Lean down. Ooh. <sighs> okay, so apparently you cannot hold the bow forever. Which I figure is the case for most games, but... I wasn't sure, because I... There we go. Somebody just said something. I don't know where they are. Does Hunter Instinct reveal them? Is that a guy? No, it's a dead guy. It's okay. Probably further in. So I'll just sneak. On as you can see. Never mind. That's not. Never mind. I lied. That's just looting somebody. Alright, where are they? I know there's people in here because I was hearing. I heard them talk, but. I cannot see them. Ooh. I probably could have just stealth killed them, but, you know, why? Go back. Go back. There you go, Laura. Let's uh, get my arrow back. And not get stuck on an invisible wall. That's awesome. People walking here. Probably above me, hopefully. Um, I'm just going to shoot this guy in the back of the head. Ooh, is that guy looking at me? No, he's not. I can just sneak up behind him. Do a quick stealth kill. You actually get less experience for stealth kills than just shooting them in the head, so I think from now on I'll just shoot them in the head. Perfect. The stealth aspect of this game is a bit weird, and that's kind of annoying, is that sometimes people will see you for no given reason whatsoever, and that's definitely annoying during the... Because during an early mandatory stealth sequence, it was a giant pain to have to try and sneak when... It was so common that Laura would not even move, or she'd be hiding behind cover, and then somebody would know where you are, or... It, it was just a bit of a pain. I'm lost again. I can definitely say that happens to me quite often. Alright, so I have to get up there. Oh, I can just climb here. There we go. Easy enough. And here's where she starts to mention... Oh, Japanese, sorry. I'm sorry, any World War II people? It wasn't German, it was Japanese. I guess that would make sense. I guess that would make sense, considering that we're looking for a... an Asian... sort of emperor, I believe. And here's another cutscene. Perfect. Well, not cutscene, but quick time event. I know it's just a loading time, but it's a bit annoying. All right, where is everyone? I'm probably going to end it soon just to avoid spoiling too much. I'm going to shoot this barrel. Uh, why did that... Huh, that's interesting. I've always found it funny how arrows can, like, blow up a barrel. Okay. I don't think in... I think in real life that's sort of impossible. That shooting an arrow into a barrel will actually cause it to explode. But, you know, I've actually... I've never tested it myself. Tune in next week for a, for a test of whether or not that works. Wow, he ran right into that. Tune in next week to see me shoot a, an explosive, a kind of gas with, with an arrow. Spoiler alert, it's probably not going to end well. Alright, we're back with that headshot right there. Sorry, I had to cut it. Lagged out for some reason. And, you know, lag. Basically, all I did... Fills, uh, I filled, filled the room with gas. Blew it up. And... Now I'm here. So... Simple enough. Ah, uh, there's these interesting little... Documents here that tell you about... The island, which is pretty interesting. Alright, so I'm not going to listen to the rest of that. It's basically telling you about World War II, which is kind of cool. And I found this new gun. Ah, they found me. It goes into slow motion, allows me to pop a few headshots. Okay. I've taken an arrow to the, to the face. All good, though. I'm fine. Ah, here's a nice little... It's actually the biggest 
This is the largest amount of combat I've actually gotten into so far. Oh, this gun is inaccurate. Although it would explain it, considering that Laura is pretty new to firing guns. Ah. As she already said, she's not... Ah, that was stupid for me to stay there. She's not that kind of croft. Who would want to be that kind of croft, right? As in the croft that's in the... You know, that was super successful and popular in all the other games. And that, that feels like something that I should mention right now. That... If you're looking for a traditional Tomb Raider... If you're looking for traditional Tomb Raider gameplay where Laura's, you know, doing all of her cool little tricks and flips and stuff, and you're basically just... And you're... It's more of a Tomb Raider sort of thing than running around these buildings and killing people. Then, you, if you know you're not going into the game for that, then it can be a fairly enjoyable... Oh. If you go in under th with that mindset, you'll understand that it's it, it's fairly it, it's it's definitely a very good game. And if you like the Uncharted series, you'll definitely like this. If you like the Uncharted series, you'll definitely like this game because it, it's definitely it's got a lot of Uncharted elements in it. Although I will say, Uncharted did not have as many quick time events or cutscenes. It was a lot more. You know, you playing the game. But I can totally be fine with cutscenes in games, especially since they the story in this game is fairly well written and well done. I haven't found too many lines of dialogue cheesy. Some of those leaves appear to be clipping through that computer. Damn non-existent leaves. I do, in fact. It was, uh... It was just down the mountain and around the giant temple thing. Right next to the McDonald's. Those things are everywhere. Ah, so, uh... Here's where we get to climb a bit. That's gonna be fun. Well, you've basically been climbing the whole time, Laura, so, you know. It's not like it's that much different. And this will show off a bit of the parkour stuff. And I think when I get to the top of it, I'm going to end it because... I think this is going to be a relatively long one because if... Because this game needs... I, I want to show off a lot of the game. Where does it want me to go? It wants me to investigate this. It wants me to light it on fire. Can I just climb out here? Or sneak through here? Yeah, it's hot. Just metal bar. There you go. Does it want me to... Can I crouch or do I just have to push W? Eh, I'm just going to hold W. I feel like this game I need to show off a lot of because it's got a lot of variation in it. As compared to... The likes of other games. As in, you know, Dead Space is relatively... Just the same thing throughout the whole game. This game is very varied. I think it wants me to kick here. Yeah. Like I said, it doesn't really do a great job of explaining, and that's and it doesn't always show up the prompts either of what you're supposed to do, and that can be a real pain when it's a matter of life and death. And now it started snowing. Brilliant. You said it, Laura. It was just pouring rain a second ago and really gray out. This game, as you can tell, is pretty gorgeous. And, ooh, ooh, this is bad... This is bad. What do you want me to do? Ah, there we go. Get off. Goodbye. Ooh, that stings. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, whistle all you want. You, you don't have a chance anyway. You're, uh... I'm not really sure why everybody seems to have bows. Apparently they learned, you know, modern video game mechanics and learned to get a bow because they figured out that it is the best weapon to have in a video game. Wow, my aiming is just really terrible right now. There we go. I finally got a shot out. Or actually hit somebody with a shot. Go down. Go down. Go down. I'm done for this. I'm going to fire the bow instead because this is way more satisfying. Who shot me? Jerk. This is going to be bad. Have I died? 
Oh, no, shove. Okay, it's teaching me that. Boom. Punch the face. What are you going to do about Oh, jeez. Ah, shove him. Shove him, shove him, shove him, shove him. That didn't work. There we go. Shoved him. Shot him in the back. He's on the ground. Finish him. Boom. Fatality. I got to say it with a deeper voice. And I've been lit on fire. Everything's going about as well as it normally does. Oh, hi there. Shove him because that seems to be pretty effective. Notch the bow. Fire into his back. Oh, shove him again because I want to. Fire another bow into his miss. There we go. Oh, nice shot. He's becoming a unicorn. So, I don't really know what else there is to say about this. <sighs> yeah, you're all dead. Like, that wasn't obvious. Enemies need to learn to not stand by explosive barrels. You know, I've always wondered why or what in their brains makes them think, Hey, let's stand next to an explosive barrel. I'm going to die. Oops, that was a bad shot. Didn't mean to let go of the mouse there, honestly. Hey, let's stand next to an explosive barrel that if, you know, they just fire their gun at it, it'll explode. Or, in this case, their bow, because for whatever reason, bows can start fires. If anyone wants to test me on that, let me know, and I'll, uh, link a video to me. I, I kind of want to see that now. <laughs> I want to see somebody trying to shoot a, uh, barrel, an explosion, and a barrel filled with gasoline or something flammable and explosive. Oh, that was stupid. I want to see somebody do that now. Ouch. And can I shove him off? Pop. That's going to be entertaining. Stop shooting me. You dick. Down you go. Shove him again. Ha, <laughs> you fell. Is he dead? Yeah, he's died. Ow. You've died. Well, you've hit me like a million times, but it's okay. I, I regenerate health. I know it's not really realistic in the sense that that. I've always wondered, how come in games people can... Ow, oh, Molotov, and he's lit himself on fire. Nice. Whoops, didn't fire there. And I notched another bow because I'm an arrow because I'm an idiot. Who's still throwing... Oh, there you are. Miss. Just get a shot. There we go. And he's lit himself on fire. Or has he? Oh, he hasn't. Ooh, problems, 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 problems. Not really, you're dead. He's still not dead. He keeps dropping fire on himself. Just push him. He's kicked me. No, I'm going to push you into your own fire. And push him into his own fire. His own fire isn't effective. He's gotten shot in the arm and died. Oh, no. It was this. Oh, hey, it's, uh... Oh. This could be problems. Let's, uh... No, he's, a, he's an effective blocker. We're... I'm in trouble here. Okay, dodge. Ah, it didn't work. Okay, what do I have to do? Do I have to, like, dodge him and then... New enemy type. I haven't actually seen him before. Go ahead. Take me on. That was close. Maybe, like, have him do that and then shove him? Can I just shove him? No, he just blocks me and then slices me. Pain. Ooh. Let's uh, take out my shooty gun. didn't work at all. Alright. Is there an environmental way to kill him? Let's see. Ooh, that was a bad time to try and pick stuff up. Move. Nope. That's on fire now. I'm gonna move out of the way. Let's see here. Sort of looking around if there's like something I can push him onto slash off of. Not looking like there is. I don't even think I can push him. Can I just light this and I can I light him on fire? That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I'm here. Dodge. Effectively. Light him on fire. Light him on fire. That didn't work at all. Uh, let's uh, switch. To, uh, that's not what I wanted to do. Maybe I'm just supposed to shoot him at him. Yeah, that looks like it's effective. I'm just going to keep doing that now. Come on. Slice me. I think a headshot will end it for him. Yeah, I was overthinking that quite a bit. Alright, so that's a new enemy type. Riot shield guy. And I found a boat part. Don't know what those are used for. I'll find out later, I guess. Headshot. Yes, I'm still alive. Deal with it. Says Laura. She's becoming more confident as it moves along, which is making her more like Laura. Although she has not yet raided any tombs, which is not making her like Tomb Raider Laura. It's making her like new Laura. And I don't like new Laura as much as I like old Laura. It's sort of the same way I felt about Devil May Cry. Although I have to admit, with Devil May Cry, and I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, the first Devil May Cry game I actually played was 4. 
I, I, I heard of 3, I played a little bit of 3, but when I first played it, I was way too young to appreciate it, slash actually play it and not die consistently, so I found it very annoying and not fun to play. Climb there, Laura. Perfect. So, I played Devil May Cry 4 later when I first got my Xbox, when I first got an Xbox 360. How do I drop? Just shift? Yeah, just shift. When I first got an Xbox 360. And I liked the game, although it didn't really have Dante in it. So I, when Dove, long story short, when the new Devil May Cry came around, I wasn't really too perturbed by the fact that it featured a new Dante. Because I never really grew too attached to the old Dante. Although I did end up going back and playing 1, 2, and 3. Guys, don't worry. I have played all of them. This is not structurally stable, Laura. I don't think you should be up here. Although we know from Far Cry we'll get to the top and there will be a zip line down for some reason. I've always wondered, why, is there, why are there zip lines on the top of radio towers? Yeah, see, there it is. Why is there a zip line on the top of a radio tower? What purpose does that serve for anybody? Do they just suddenly come up with the idea, hey, you know what? I don't want to climb down safely. I'm just going to use a zip line because it's more fun. Also, how did they get that up there in the first place? I should stop worrying about it. It's a video game, and video games don't really run with the realistic... Yes, Laura, you're at the top, and yes, it's a far fall. You shouldn't look down, and you look down. <sighs> Fucking idiot. It's alright. She's learning, guys. This can't go well. Am I playing this part? Well, sort of. Climb to the top. Yeah, you're gonna have to jump. That isn't gonna be fun. Oh, that's gonna go wrong. Just hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just reach up. There you go. Problem solved. And you're at the top. Oh, radio towers and your deadliness. And what a spectacular view. Gorgeous it is. Okay, I actually have to play this part. What do you want me to do? Just hold. Alright, so now we just this one. Let me see. I can't really hear it. I'm going to have to boost my volume a little bit. Sorry for going so silent there for a second, I was... I'm just trying to listen. There we go. And as we take this zip line down to this seemingly That's one way to get down. Yeah, I know, right? And the it, it's disappeared. Well, all right then. 
with the vanishing zip line and the gas tank to my left, or, yeah, to my left, Laura's right, I guess, and Laura staring at, you know, just deep into your soul, I'm gonna end it here. In terms of my opinions about this game, if you can get past the fact that this is not a typical Tomb Raider game, as in, I haven't raided any tombs yet, I'm, I, I almost, I can't say anything because I haven't read any reviews about it, but I'm pretty sure that you will get to that eventually. I'm not sure in how much of it or if it's just scripted nonsense or if it's actually, you know, an open worldy thing. It's, it's showing elements of an open worldish area. It's got some Metroidvania E elements. And, like, from the upgrades that I've received, as in when I got the bow, I've been able to go back to the old campfires and get different parts for my weapons and stuff. So, if you look past the fact that it's not your typical Tomb Raider, then you will... This is a very good game to buy. It, it's visually appealing. It's fun to play. The story is pretty good. Although I have to say, the, char the rest of the characters, except for Laura, are pretty flat. And the combat is fun and satisfying. Now, if you're buying this just for the multiplayer, you're not going to want to buy it. The multiplayer is not really anything good slash special. If you really want to play a good PC game with, you know, really good multiplayer in it, I highly recommend. Let's think. If, you, if you're if you not looking for something like Call of Duty, I say Call of Duty just because that's like a, a, an experience that you can get for the most part. But if you're looking for a decent third-person shooter multiplayer, you can... There is the... There is Gears of War on this. You can get Uncharted on the PlayStation. And there's just a number of better options. This just isn't the way to go with that. So, with my opinions all well and said and done, and this relatively long video all said and done, this is Triple Helix, signing off.